Hi there! Today's video starts the beginning of a new series on the theremin. We will go through all we have done with the theremin project, we will analyze the inherent problems of the design we used for it, and we will try to identify possible improvements that we can make to the theremin to make it more reliable and sound better. From here, we will start a new series of videos to build the enhanced version of the theremin, which we will call Theremin version 2. Let's start from a block diagram of the first theremin version. I consider this past design of the theremin an experiment to try new ideas on the design and make a first working prototype. But now, it is time to move on and go further, designing and building a version of the theremin that is stable, reliable and fun to play, basically a real musical instrument. To do so, we need to go through the old design and evaluate all the issues of it that I found along the way. Then, we will take a list of issues and find a better design solution that fixes at its best all the issues encountered in the past, so we can have a final design worth the name of a real musical instrument. First of all, let's start saying that the existing design was not a failure, but it had enough issues in it that caused me to go through a number of iterations to find the best approach to the design of each of the elements of the theremin. And still, despite that, I now recognize that some things could have been done better. So, with no further ado, let's go through the list of the issues that I could think of. And, for you that followed me up to this point with the project, I am going to ask you if you can think of anything else that can be made better. So please do not hesitate to let me know your thoughts through your comments, and remember, no one comment is stupid, nor I will take any offense on critics on the old project. All comments you will provide will be very welcome and will help making the Theremin version 2 a better instrument. The first thing I can think about of the old Theremin is the sensitivity of the volume antenna. Through the volume antenna we are supposed to provide an extended range of loudness for the Theremin sound up to the complete silence when the hand is close to the antenna. However, I found that the current design makes the antenna relatively insensitive to the position of the hand. I could barely change the volume of the sound, and to have it completely silenced, I had to actually touch the antenna. This is not how it is supposed to work, so I have to think at some changes in the design to make the sensitivity much higher. The second issue also involves the sensitivity, but this time on the pitch antenna. The pitch antenna was sensitive enough to give me a good range of notes, about three octaves, but the problem there was that the notes were very close to each other which makes more difficult to play the instrument. In short, I would like to make possible to move the end from a position very close to my body to a position very close to the antenna and keep it in that range of movements, at least the same range of notes of the old theremin. The third issue involves what is called a crosstalk among different elements of the theremin. In other words, RF frequencies from the pitch section were spilling over the volume RF section and vice versa, causing unwanted effects, like slight change in volume when the pitch changes, or even injection of high frequencies on the audio power amplifier, which was causing a distortion of the audio signal that changed with the volume of the sound. Fourth issue was the power supply. I used a regulated power supply for all the circuits of the theremin, but the audio amplifiers. This caused a further distortion in the audio power amplifier and also in the preview amplifier. We don't want that to happen, of course, so we want a clean sound throughout the whole scale of theremin notes. The fifth issue was the drift of the RF oscillator frequencies. In my case, it took a few minutes before the drift stopped and I was able to use the theremin correctly. Until then, Note frequencies kept changing even if my hand was still with respect to the pitch antenna. But, true, of course, after a few minutes the drift stopped, but that's not how I want the instrument to behave. I want the instrument to work right as soon as I turn it on. So, this is all I could think of the previous term in design that could be done better. Again, Please let me know through the comments if there is anything else that should be addressed, maybe something that you noticed when building your own theremin, based on my design. With your help, we can make this work optimally with version 2, and have a good instrument in our hands. Let's talk now about possible solutions to the issues we just listed. 
If more comes out, of course, I will make another video to discuss this topic further. So, about the first issue, we want a greater sensitivity of the volume control. While some of the extra sensitivity should be achieved by shielding the RF oscillator from the rest of the circuits, I would like to also try to increase the working frequency of the volume variable oscillator. A greater RF frequency should allow for the oscillator to be more sensitive to the location of the hand with respect to the volume antenna. Also, it should allow for a finer adjustment of the resonant frequency of the volume resonant circuit, which should improve the volume control. I will attempt a similar solution also for the pitch section of the theremin. Increasing the RF frequency of the pitch oscillator should help increase the sensitivity of the pitch variable oscillator to the position of the hand with respect to the pitch antenna. And, since the pitch and volume sections of the theremin version 2 will be shielded from each other, there should also be no interaction between the two circuits. By the way, talking about shielding, this should cancel almost completely the crosstalk between the pitch and the volume oscillators, eliminating the third issue we talked about. Also, the usage of a PCB for each of these circuits will help preventing crosstalk among the elements of the theremin, eliminating all the cable crossings that I had to do on the perf board of version 1. For the fourth issue, I will design a regulated power supply with better filtering of all the RF and low frequencies. That should help eliminating distortion of the audio amplifiers, as well as reducing even further the cross-talk and contamination of the signals moving around the theremin circuits. And finally, I will probably need a redesign of the oscillators to minimize the frequency drift caused by the temperature when the theremin is turned on. Or maybe it will be just enough to use better capacitors and inductors that maintain their nominal value more constant with temperature drifts. This is something I will need to experiment a little further anyway. At the end, the theremin block diagram from version 1 is still good for the new version 2 of the theremin. However, I decided to group some of the blocks together to highlight the sections that will be electromagnetically shielded from each other. Here is how the block diagram will be regrouped for version 2. We will see just four main blocks, and all the existing functionalities of each block will be added inside the four main boxes. At the end, the new block diagram will look like this, much simpler than the previous one, although we know that each of the four blocks has now greater complexity inside than the blocks in the old design. This time I will build each block on the theremin version 2 in a different order than the previous theremin version. I will start with the power supply, which is the one that we need to power all the other elements. That will be followed by the two audio amplifiers, the one from the preview, and the actual one for the theremin sound. Having these blocks done first will allow us to hear the theremin sound as soon as the other stages are completed, without the need of doing tricks to make the sound audible. Next, I will build the pitch circuits, so we can start generating a new theremin sound and hear it directly from the actual amplifiers of the theremin itself. And finally, I will build the volume control section, which will add the dynamics to the sound. Thank you for having followed me so far in this journey to build the perfect theremin. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that together we will have fun building the new enhanced version, version 2. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. The subscription is free, of course, and if you also click on the bell that appears after you subscribe, you will be automatically informed of any video that will appear in the future on this channel. See you soon on the next video, and as usual, happy experiments!